From DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com, I'm Darren Marlar, and this is your Daily Dose of Weird News. If you're already an official weirdo, please share this video on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, and other social media to help get the word out. If you'd like to become an official weirdo, just click that subscribe button, and while you're at it, click that like button to let the world know that you are a weirdo. A survey says young Instagrammers use the app 32 minutes a day. 32 minutes a day snapping selfies. Well, I guess future generations won't have any problem finding documentary evidence for why society collapsed. Walt Disney Studios is developing a reboot of the 1991 action-adventure movie The Rocketeer. The project in the early development stages is considered a sequel reboot and, in a modern-day twist, will be headlined by a black female character. Yes, because the gender swap idea was so successful in Ghostbusters. 21% of U.S. broadband households use wellness, fitness, or diet apps. Now, I'm not saying those apps actually work for anybody, but people do have them. West Virginia's Governor Jim Justice is switching from being a Democrat to becoming a Republican. Uh, no need to worry, though. It won't really matter much because both parties now have the same goal of destroying the country. 65-year-old Tom Wopat, the actor who played Luke Duke in the 1980s television show The Dukes of Hazard, is facing indecent assault and battery and drug charges. You see what happens now when you take the Confederate flag away from the Southern boys? They get all rowdy. Why can't the system just leave those Duke boys alone, huh? Some people are born to be wild. Others are born to mope. A study from the University of Michigan states, we have identified a blue marker that's linked to an increased risk of major depression. Brain scans revealed that people who react strongly to negative experiences have drastically lower levels of a brain molecule called neuropeptide Y. And in response to negative words, says the study, the lower NPY group showed strong activation in the prefrontal cortex, which is involved with the processing of emotion, while subjects with higher NPY demonstrated a much smaller response. The researchers are hoping this discovery will lead to better treatments for people with severe depression. In the meantime, if you always see the glass as half empty, then just grab it with gusto, drink a toast to your genes, and accept the fact that you are a born pessimist. Dunkin' Donuts is experimenting with a new name in California, calling itself just Dunkin'. It's a pretty good move, you know, with today's ever-decreasing attention span. A decade from now, Dunkin' Donuts will just be named Dunk, and then eventually Duh. Trump aide Kellyanne Conway says the president's low approval rating is because people want to see progress on his agenda. Personally, I just think the low approval ratings are fake news. Former FBI Director James Comey has inked a book deal. Because of course he did. Five a day is not enough. To add years to your life, eat ten daily servings of fruits and vegetables, say British researchers, who have found that packing our diet with everything from apples to zucchini lowers our risk of heart attack, stroke, cancer, and early death. Ten a day is such a powerful recipe for good health and longevity that the team from Imperial College London estimates that if everyone around the globe did this, a staggering 7.8 million premature deaths worldwide would be avoided every year. Now, To arrive at this conclusion, the Imperial College London scientists they analyzed 95 previous research studies that included almost 2 million people. Now, How much is 10 servings a day? Well, it's about 800 grams of produce. And that translates to 10 small bananas or apples, or 30 tablespoons of cooked spinach, peas, broccoli, or cauliflower. Whoa! 10 small bananas or apples per day. 10? Forget it! That ain't gonna happen! So I guess I'm dying prematurely. Nike re-released the Air Max shoes on Friday, two decades after they were first unveiled. Man, two decades. I hope they use some odor eaters and Febreze on those things. An Alabama Islamic organization is asking for an investigation after a Muslim family sat at McDonald's purposely served them bacon. Yeah, it was done on purpose, because McDonald's ultra-successful business model is based on offending as many people as possible. The number of U.S. wineries is now almost up to 10,000. 
If you spend a half hour watching the news, you'll know why Americans are drinking more. Shaquille O'Neal says he blames God for his bad free-throw shooting as a way of keeping him humble. Uh, apparently, that didn't work. Humility is not blaming somebody else for your problems. The Chinese man claims his beer-drinking pet duck can understand him. The man takes his duck for a walk every day and claims it will sit or fly on command. He feeds the duck mainly peanuts, but also it enjoys seafood and beer. It actually prefers to drink cold duck, but the man thought that that was a bit inappropriate. Driverless bus services have been launched in Estonia. Now you get an unfeeling cold robot insisting on exact change. Hey, if you recently deposited a bag of cocaine along with your cash at an ATM machine in Bradenton, Florida, well, the police would like a word with you. A technician was called to check out a jammed ATM at a Suncoast Credit Union branch, and he quickly discovered the cause – a small, clear baggie containing a white, powdery substance. The technician concluded that the substance was possibly with the cash of the last person who made the deposit, causing the malfunction. Police got the name on the bank account of the last deposit made and are now looking for that person. The powdery substance tested positive for cocaine. All right, even if you have a safety deposit box at the banking institution, you can't make a deposit into it via the ATM. But then, if your brain wasn't on cocaine, you probably would have known that. Scientists say with the moon moving farther away, the last solar eclipse visible on Earth will be in 600 million years. So you better pay attention this August 21st. You don't know how many more you're going to get before they're gone forever. A frowning poop emoji is said to be in the works because, let's face it, anything that requires a picture of poop probably shouldn't have a happy face anyway. Half of the candidates for mayor in the city of Detroit are convicted felons. This is outrageous! I mean, you expect that in Chicago, but in Michigan? According to a new study, cats may have more potential than dogs to sniff out bombs. Which may be true, but they just won't care enough to do it. So you think you can dance winner Joshua Allen has been sentenced to a year in jail on domestic violence charges. Just wait until his fellow inmates find out his claim to fame as being a dancer. A new CNN poll finds that only 24 percent of those surveyed trust the information coming out of the White House. But then that news came from CNN, so it might not be accurate at all. In Tucson, Arizona, Little Caesars Pizza is experimenting with a pizza vending machine called a Pizza Portal, when you would walk into their store, pick out a pizza, and have it served up by the machine, never talking with a human. It's a pizza created by the caring, loving hands of a Terminator. A survey says millennials would rather save money for travel or retirement than buy clothes, so they might be better off financially at retirement age, but they'll be naked. Did you know GM is already selling a $5,000 electric car in China? China purchases 40 percent of the electric cars produced in the world. And not only does cheap stuff get made in China, it gets sent there too, apparently. You'll be happy to hear that American tourists aren't the only ones who occasionally act like idiots in other countries. Two Chinese tourists were arrested in Berlin after police spotted them taking pictures of each other giving the Hitler salute outside the Reichstag. This is pretty serious stuff thanks to a post-1945 law that makes flags, insignia, uniforms, slogans, and forms of greeting of unconstitutional organizations, like the Nazis, very illegal. The two men, aged 36 and 49, now face up to three years in prison or a day trip to Auschwitz, whichever they prefer. A Minnesota man is facing his ninth DWI-related charge after he allegedly was caught driving a lawnmower while intoxicated. Well, yeah, but haven't yard work and beer always gone together? A study says five new brain disorders have been created by digital obsession. Well, well I'm sorry, don't make that six. Now there's a disorder for looking for disorders. Four Dallas police officers who responded to a noise complaint Saturday night ended up dancing at the wedding that was causing the noise. In a video shared on social media, the officers can be seen dancing with bridesmaids, the bride, and other attendants. Plus, the bride got her something blue. It had been over two weeks since anyone had heard from Jamie Tull. 
That's because the 33-year-old former kindergarten teacher crashed her car in a ditch in rural central California on July 17th. Rescuers found her emaciated, dehydrated, and severely sunburned. They called it a miracle that they'd even spotted her lying in a field too weak to walk. Tall told authorities she survived by eating two grasshoppers and a fly and drinking water from a dirty cattle trough. Rescuer Robert Carpenter said anyone who can survive out here for 17 days is an amazing gal to me. Friends and family had been searching for Tall at a desolate cattle ranching area near La Grande since her car was found in a ditch. Searchers were set to scale back the effort when they spotted her less than a mile from the crash site in Tall Grass. Lynn Garber was one of the searchers who found Tall and says Tall told them she had been praying throughout her ordeal and was glad to be found. However, Merced County Sheriff Vern Warnke tells things a little bit differently, saying Tall asked for food and water but then told searchers to leave her. She hunkered down. She didn't want to be found, says Warnke. Tall's family told reporters she suffers from bipolar disorder but stopped taking her medication at the urging of a pastor and his wife who associated the pills with demons. She's recovering at a burn unit at a Fresno hospital. Okay, uh, word of advice here from a born-again Christian, which I am. Uh, if your pastor tells you that you're taking medication and it's associated with demons, you need to find a different church. The people in charge of the rules of golf made some sweeping changes to the game recently, hoping to make it more appealing to the masses. Among the changes, you can now leave the flag in the hole when you putt, you can legally pull your ball out of the sand and take a penalty stroke, and the time allowed to search for a missing ball has been cut from five minutes to three. And instead of yelling four, you're also now allowed to yell, INCOMING! L'Oreal's predicting that soon there will be male cosmetic counters popping up in stores. Okay, that, that's it. I'm starting a GoFundMe campaign to raise enough money to buy an island so I can get away from these creeps. Donors to the campaign, you get to come with me. 57% of American adults and a whopping 73% of young people ages 12 to 17 use Facebook, and most of us visit the site at least once a day. Half of all adult Facebook users have more than 200 friends in their network, but only 15% have more than 500 friends. 12% of Facebook users say that somebody else has asked them to unfriend a person in their network, and younger users are more likely to have experienced this than older users, while 44% of Facebook users like their friends' content and comment on photos at least once a day. Only 10% change or update their own status on Facebook daily. 25% say they never change or update their Facebook status. Now, if you'd like to read all of that for yourself, uh, I'll post it to Facebook. YouTube gets 4.1 million views every minute, which I'm not seeing any of, dagnabbit. Somebody watch my videos! YouTube.com slash MarlarHouse. Today's Daily Dose of Weird News is brought to you by the children's audiobook The Adventures of Mr. Teapot by Tatiana Matina, narrated by yours truly. Hear a free sample and support Marlar House by downloading the audiobook for yourself at DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. Be sure to click that notification bell, too, so you'll know when I post new videos. Find even more weird news that I didn't have time for at DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com. I'm Darren Marlar, and I'll see you next time, weirdos!